Das Rock Antenne Interview mit Roger Hudson. So Roger, first of all, welcome in Munich. Good to have you here. It's a great pleasure and a good reason because you're gonna play live. So the first question, uh, what does it mean for you playing live? Playing live, uh, it's it's what my heart is telling me to do right now, and it's uh, it's really better than ever. Um, I think because I'm older, I'm wiser, and I I think I know more how to how to connect with the audience now. And it's not not something I try to do; it's something in here. And I think it's just I'm having so much fun, and I think. Uh, It's amazing to have so many songs that people love and people want to hear and uh, and uh, that bring back so many memories for them. To look out and see so many generations. This, I see seven-year-olds to 70-year-olds. I mean, it's and everything in between. And and uh, I feel very, very blessed. I'm, I'm a very, very lucky man. <laughs> <laughs> um, you tried different... Uh let's say, uh, uh, sorts of, of, of performing. You did duo, you did mm -hmm. with the orchestra, you did with the band. Uh, what do you prefer? Um, you know, I, I like them all. I, I really do. They're all very different. Um, and I, I prefer to, to do them all, too, because um, the orchestra is, is obviously very exciting and to have that huge, great sound and so many... Um, Musicians playing in harmony and sync, and uh, fools overture. I always envision that with an orchestra, and so to hear that is like you know goosebumps. Um, but uh, the duo is um, a whole nother experience. I play with my Canadian friend Aaron McDonald, and it's a very intimate show. And there's something very magic when people hear. Take the Long Way Home or Breakfast in America without the band, with just the way it sounded when I wrote it. And the people, actually people prefer that show maybe more than anything. Um, but I love the band, I have a great band also, so I'm very happy to have all three. So let's go back in, in the career. Uh, I've, I've just listened to the first two albums uh, on my way here to the interview. Uh -huh. And uh, listening to those albums and then to Crime of the Century, that's... Uh, huge step. Huge difference, yeah. uh, what does uh, Crime of the Century mean to you nowadays? If what comes to your mind? Oh, it was it was a powerful time. Um, I think the biggest difference it, it is. It's a huge. It's stunning the difference between Indelibly Stamped and Crime of the Century. And I think that the difference was that Crime of the Century was the first time that the songs became personal. Um, before. For, for indelibly stamped, I was still trying to write a song the way other people wrote, you know. But for on Crime of the Century, suddenly it was it was my heart expressing itself. And hiding your shell, for example, was very much about me and about uh, how difficult life was for me at that time because I was 23 and had many questions and I was very. Um, shy and introvert, and and uh, you know had had a lot of um, a lot going on inside. So I was that expressed a lot of my kind of pain, if you like, and uh, all my um, uh, needing to find my way. And the same with Rick. Rick Rick's songs were very personal on that that album, very p powerful in another way. So it, it uh, had that very, uh, and then symbolically for for the two of us. You know, the cover, the bars, that really was us trying to get out, I believe. Now, looking back, I didn't know it at the time, <laughs> but uh, I think that's that, that it was. Would you say that this is the magic of this album? I think so, yeah. I think there were two very, very... Um, I, don't know, I don't want to call us tortured souls, but uh, we were two two men who were really trying to find peace in our life and trying to, to find uh, um, healing or whatever. And, and that, that's what, what was in Crime of the Century. And, and yet there was a lot of hope. I mean, Dreamer you know, was a very hopeful song. That was me, my optimistic side, my, my Dreamer side uh, coming out and, um, and everything in between. 
So it, it was a very rich album, yeah. Have you ever expected uh, Crime of Century being such an enormous success? That it was no, no. It was uh, you. You don't think about. I didn't. I didn't think about what uh, what was going to happen to it. I, all I knew is that it was a very magical time. The record company were, you know, gave us um, license in the studio to do what we wanted. We were working with Ken Scott, who was a wonderful mentor in recording techniques and experimenting and everything, and. Um, It was a, a fantastic opportunity, and we we uh, we came up. It's a very very special album that, and it has a very strong history within the, the group members also. Um, I read something that uh, some of the songs who became later on uh, big hits on one hand, and on the other hand, they uh, just were released were already written years before. Mm -hmm. Always. Um, I've always had a huge backlog of material. Um, I still have 60 songs plus that have not been heard. Um, and uh, Breakfast in America, for example, was actually written before Crime of the Century, but it didn't belong on Crime of the Century. You know, it wouldn't have fit it with that collection of songs. So Rick was not as productive with songwriting, so I always had to listen, okay, what, what does Rick have? He has the, these songs, okay, which of my songs would fit with his? So that's, that's the way it worked. And uh, then when we came to do Breakfast in America, it seemed like, okay, Breakfast in America fits with Goodbye Stranger and uh, Oh Darling. Okay, they, they kind of work together, so okay. that's what happened. So because there, there were two, two uh, uh, Crisis for Crisis came in between, yeah. and even at the quietest moment also. Mm-hmm, yep. Um, they actually Crisis for Crisis, funny enough, is my favorite album, and it didn't didn't do as well because it did not have the hit single. But it's a, as a collection of songs, I love it. It's your favorite Super Trump It album? is, yeah, yeah. Today, do you still listen to it? I listen to yeah uh, tracks, not not very often, but I sometimes I put a track or two on. Yeah. Uh, in '83, you left the band uh, and said you want to do your solo career. You released in '84 in the Eye of the Storm. Mm -hmm. Many people said that this is the long lost Supertramp album because mm -hmm. uh, if you're listening to Brother Where You Bound and you're listening to the In the Eye of the Storm, uh, mm -hmm. you are more Supertramp than Brother Where You Bound was. Mm -hmm. Would you agree with that? Um, well, I, I, yeah, I mean, I, I know who I was in Supertramp. I'm, I, I was not just a, the singer songwriter. I mean, I, I really, um, I was the, the passionate producer figure that the the arranger i mean I, i did a lot with with within supertramp but i i never wanted the credit for it so supertramp was what i it was all about supertramp so it was very difficult leaving supertramp and giving supertramp to rick the name um probably one of the most foolish things i've ever done <laughs> but uh um but yes in the eye of the storm was uh it um It does. It does. A lot of people tell me that that, that it's very much super tramp, but but it 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 is because you know I, I was so much a part of the sound, the arrangements, the the voice, the songwriting. So um, I'm not putting Rick down, but uh, historically it's interesting. My songs seem to have stood the test of time better than his for some reason, but. Um, Uh, in '83, released, released the last Supertramp album, Famous Last Words. Uh, was it uh, already uh, the idea for, from your side to leave the band because it's called Famous Last Words? Yeah, it was, you know, um, the band was, uh, Famous Last Words was a real disappointment because the songs, my songs had a dream, Brother Way You Bound. Um, a lot of the songs that went on my solo album and went on Brother Way Bound, Rick's, Rick's next album, were could have we we were going to be on Famous Last Words, 
but they were too difficult because the band was not unified enough to, to really do them justice. So the, the collection of songs that ended up on Famous Last Words was very um, compromised. There was huge compromise. And I was, I couldn't live with it. I, I was, it was hard. And it was obvious to me that the writing was on the wall, you know. Um, it, it, I couldn't get it back. The spirit was, had gone. And uh, there has to be that spirit and un unity within any group of people working together to make something good come out of it. And I couldn't do it. So Rick and I actually both agreed on the title, Famous Last Words, We're not, we're not doing this again. <laughs> you just said uh, you have 60 plus songs in, 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 in the back. So uh, can we expect another album? Um, you know, I don't know what I'm going to do with it. I'm not going to, I don't know what I'm going to do with them. We're living in very interesting times, as, as you know. I don't know whether it's even about CDs anymore. Um, maybe, maybe I'll just record a song and put it on YouTube and let people, uh, you know, listen to it that way. I, I, I don't know. It's, it's such a d different world now. Than, uh, people don't listen to 40 minutes of music anymore. I used to create 40-minute listening experiences, take people on a journey. But now it's about the song. People don't have the time. Except in concert. See, in concerts, I can take people on a two-hour journey, you know, and take them through different emotions and highs and lows, you know, And and uh, and give them a real deep experience, but people don't listen. I don't think to, to whole albums anymore. So, I think um, yes. To answer your question, I, I I play a few new songs in the concerts so the fans can hear them, and I hope to uh, get more and more out. So one last and probably the most asked question: uh, All over the years, there were rumors from time to time mm -hmm. about the reunion. So. Mm -hmm. uh, Can we expect a reunion? Do you want? Don't you want? Does Rick want? <clears throat> mm -hmm. um, you know, we tried twice, a couple of times over the years, and um, there's. Um, I think I think the time has passed. I really do, uh, because I know that the the ro romantic myth that's associated with the name Supertramp, and unfortunately, um, you know, I. All my songs were put out as Supertramp, but actually they're they're my songs. They were they were written. I wrote them alone. I did did not even write them with Supertramp. So people are hearing my songs when they come to my concerts, and many people are saying, "Wow, I I felt like I I felt Supertramp in your concerts," which maybe that's a good compliment. I don't know, <laughs> but uh, you know, I know I was so much a part of the spirit of Supertramp, especially the songwriting and and the voice. So. I believe that the, the, the spirit of the band lives on in my shows, and Rick is, has the name. It's, he's, he has the trademark of the name, so he goes out occasionally you know, as Supertramp, but it's a very different... It's, to me, it's not Supertramp. It's Rick with a few other musicians. That's right. And uh, it is what it is. But I don't think, you know, I really... If I felt like the magic would be there and Rick and I would come, come again, and we'd create some magic, then maybe I would look at it. But I don't think that would happen. I'm creating more magic by myself. So, And with my great band. I've got a fantastic band, too. So thanks a lot for your time. Thank great you. Great pleasure talking to Thank you. you.